Hey, this is Cam with Blacktail Studio, and this week I'm going to be showing you how to calculate how much epoxy you need for your resin table project. And I'm going to show you on this 120 inch by 48 inch black walnut resin table that I'm building, because this one is such a weird shape that if you can calculate this one, you can calculate any table. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to take measurements about every six to eight inches. It doesn't have to be exact. You just want to make sure you remember exactly how many measurements you take, and that's going to be the critical part. So you can see here, I'm just going about every six to eight inches, taking a measurement in inches, and then writing it down on the slab itself. These slabs actually had some really tapered spots, and so you can see what I'm doing there is I'm taking the distance at the top and then the distance at the bottom. And normally I wouldn't do this, but since there's about a six inch difference between the slope there, that's why it was important to take a distance on the top and the bottom. The more measurements you take, the more accurate it's going to be. And you can see, since this is kind of a weird uh, roundabout turn there, I'm just kind of guesstimating the distance between each one of those. And you'd be surprised how accurate this is in the end. And all we're doing here is a really a pretty basic volume calculation. So you're going to take all of your measurements, add every single one of them up, making sure you didn't miss any. You're going to put them into the calculator here. So kind of a little hyperlapse of me adding everything up. And that's our total number. I took a screenshot to make sure I wouldn't forget that. Now i got to count the total number of measurements I took, which was 35, 412, divided by 35, 11.77. So we're going to remember that number. And the reason we're going to remember that number is because that is the average width of our entire river. So we need to find now the average depth and the average length. And since this is pretty unusual shaped river, it, we're going to have to go around the turns there. If you had a rather straight one, it wouldn't be so hard. This one, we're going to have to go around the turns a little bit. And again, just estimating the best I can. You may laugh, but this is really similar to how I took notes in college. Didn't do it on a piece of wood, but not far off. Anyway, now we're going to keep adding this up to find the length of our river. And added it all up, took a screenshot so we don't forget it, but the total length is 195 inches. So we're going to add that to our average width, and I should make a note that I actually took that 0.77 off because there's a piece I'm going to be adding in, you're going to see in a minute. So I did 195 by 11 by 2.75, and I did intentionally leave that 0.77 off for a smaller piece that you'll see here in a little bit. Anyway, that gives us 96 liters, but we need to add an eighth of an inch underneath the wood, which you may see, think is a waste, and you would definitely be right, because this epoxy is going to seep under there. If it's really flat, maybe a sixteenth of an inch, but on a table like this, it's going to be 13 wasted liters, a whole eighth of an inch, and we need to add an eighth of an inch around the entire perimeter. So you may hate seeing all this epoxy wasted, and I do too, but this is really just how it works. So another two liters wasted around the perimeter. So we're going to add all those numbers up. We have the 96 plus 13 plus 2. It takes me longer than it should to add it up. Double checking. 111. Seems right. Anyway, should be 111 liters according to this calculation. Here is the piece that is the reason I took off that 0.77 from the average width, just a small piece added in there that was my best guesstimate for how much volume it would take off. And you can see here the slab has been shellacked, so the chalk wipes off really easy. I do recommend shellacking your tables, and there's a lot more information I can give on these resin table builds in my other videos that I recommend clicking over if you are wanting to see a full tutorial on how to build those resin tables. But this one, I'm just mixing my drops. I'm actually counting them so I can do this in multiple pours and get the same color black. But it ended up being 15 liters per bucket, so it's going to be pretty easy to keep count of how many buckets and how much volume we end up using. And these buckets really don't go quite as far as you think in a big table like this. These pours are always pretty fun to watch, though. I'm really trying not to splash it in there like you see some people do. It's best to get the fewest bubbles possible if you just pour it nice and easy. Another bucket down. No real reason I couldn't be pouring all in one spot, but I do kind of like to mix it up a little bit. It's important to get the table as flat as you can, at least when you're topping it off. It's going to make the biggest difference for you to make sure not all the epoxy pools to one end. And anyway, I let this first layer cure because it was so much epoxy it can react if you pour too much at once so i did 45 liters and i'm going to do my second pour uh, to top it off 
I did wait till this was fully cured, which ideally you want to wait about two days till it's just kind of gummy and then do the second pour. But since it was fully cured, you need to come back, scuff it up to get a really good bond on that next pour. Also, it, it is black and you're not going to probably see any dust that's in there, but I still want to get it as clean as I absolutely can. The microfiber does a really good job of picking up all of that dust. This dam is kind of optional and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but it gives you about another quarter inch, three eighths of an inch of a buffer when you top this off. If your table slightly tilted and over 10 feet, this table, there's no way I was going to get it perfectly level. So there's going to be a little bit of a pool at one end and not so much the other. I did also count the drops per liter of black on this epoxy to make sure you wouldn't see a thin layer of color change because you know even a black you think is just black but if you had a very black on the top and not as black on the bottom you would get a little bit of a seam there that you just wouldn't want to see from the side. So I got a, about as perfect of a color match as I could pouring my buckets here seeing how close we're going to get. I did see one guy online that was bragging about a 60 liter pour, and this is my biggest pour to date, and it's only 100 liters. There are some guys online that I've seen doing, uh, I know I've seen 200 liters, and I think Black Forest even did a 300 liter pour, which is just crazy. But a good tip if you're not using vacuum chamber is to let these bubbles set for about 15 minutes, let them all rise, come back with a torch, pop them all, and that's gonna get rid of a big chunk of them. It's not as important with a black table, but with a transparent table, it's really, really important to try to minimize those bubbles. And some of you are probably gonna notice that even though I popped all those bubbles, as soon as I pour it in, I'm introducing a lot more air, so more bubbles are coming. And most of those will pop on their own. You just wanna minimize all the bubbles you possibly can. One tool that I love for these projects is a little Jello injector. You can get a whole pack of them on Amazon for super cheap but they make a great tool for going back, filling the little nooks and crannies. And I have a lot more details on this. If you do want a full resin table build, uh, I'll include some links to that. But one of my favorite tips that I found out kind of by accident, and this is one I figured out on my own even, is using a brush to brush uh, all your sides in. And that's because these bubbles, when they splash in, they like to cling to the sides. Like you see, you know, bubbles stuck to a straw in your soda or in your water that if you can brush it off, it's really, really gonna minimize the amount of bubbles that end up uh, sticking to the sides in the end. So as I'm doing the voiceover, I realized I already kind of gave away the total number, but how close did I estimate? Added up all the buckets, it ended up being 105 liters total, which actually surprised me even a little bit. I didn't know I was gonna be that accurate. It was, 111 was our estimate, but 105 was really, really close. And we could have easily poured another six liters in there if we wanted to really top it off. But here's a quick clip of us at Creative Woodworking getting it surfaced. Here's a clip of it ready to ship. I am gonna do a video on building a crate like this if you're interested. And here's a shot of it in its forever home. And I actually gotta give my wife credit for this joke. She called it its forever home because it's gonna to be too heavy to ever move out of there. Okay, that's the whole video. I really appreciate you making it this far. If I left anything out or if I wasn't clear on anything, please feel free to ask me in the comments. I'm really pretty good about answering every single one of those. And as always, if you like this video, please subscribe for more just like it. Thanks again.